so today we're pretty much going to talk about Fibonacci. We're going to actually talk more than just Fibonacci numbers. We're going to actually talk about some other major numbers too. So, you know, there's the main Fibonacci numbers that you may have heard everyone talk about. 50% retracement, 38.2, 61.8, and stuff like that. But there's some other numbers. They're not necessarily Fibonacci numbers, but they're very critical to trading too. Okay, and we'll discuss those. Uh, I'm just going to throw everything and say they're all Fibonacci numbers, but they're not really Fibonacci. Okay, so just so that I don't have to keep on going for a tongue twister and say these are Fibonacci's and these are not, and keep on saying that for every slide. I'm just going to say these are the key numbers. Okay, so we'll talk about what Fibonacci's are and how they derive in the main ones, and then we'll talk about the non-main ones, the non-Fibonacci ones too. You guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Normal procedure disclaimer. This is state. This is for education use only. If you decide to take a trade, you're doing this at your own discretion. This is for my licenses. Say yes. 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 You also acknowledge all the charts are from Thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade. Okay. Yeah, I know it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> so definition Fibonacci. You probably have seen this in in high school and so forth. So basically, Fibonacci is when you take two numbers, you add them together and basically it gives you a new number and then you keep on adding it to the previous one and you get a whole sequence of numbers okay so you can read this your own but basically here's if you got 0 1 right 1 1 you add 1 1 what's that 2 2 plus 1 is what 3 3 plus 2 is what 5 5 plus 3 is 8 8 plus 5 is 13 so it's just taking the previous number adding it, adding it to itself and then coming up with a new number you guys okay with that yeah now the Fibonacci numbers come from the ratios. So if you take 8 and divide by 13, you get the 61.53, right? You turn that from a per into a percentage, that's basically 61.5% retracement. You guys see that? Yeah. 38.2% retracement and so forth. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. So Fibonacci's all they're doing is taking these, each of these and dividing by the, the previous number. Okay, the after the number. So you got 50%, 61.8, uh, 38.2, and so forth. So if you look at the key ratio values, they're right here. You guys see these? You could do square roots and stuff like that. These are kind of key key values that you could see uh, based on Fibonacci's and also key values there. Okay. Now. The key Fibonacci ratios are basically right here. 23.6, 38.2, 61.8, 100%. Everyone understand that? Other key values are 50%, 78.6, 88.6, and 127. Okay? You guys okay? Yeah. Okay, now, these are percentages. Sometimes you may see them in decimal form. So in decimal form, this may look like 1.27. This may look like 8.886. This may look like 0.786 and so forth. Okay? okay? Now you got all these numbers and all that. Now, there's two things. When you look at Fibonacci's in your chart, there's Fibonacci retracements and extensions. And it's confusing as hell which one to use. There's also these Fibonacci arcs, Fibonacci circles, Fibonacci time series. There's all kinds of Fibonacci stuff. Okay? So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use Fibonacci retracements. Okay, and you really don't need to learn any of the others because if you click at two different points, one minute to retracement, one minute to extension, depending on where you click on the chart. So if you learn how to do the Fibonacci retracement and understand, if you click from here to here, it'll give you a retracement. If you click from here to here, it'll give you extension. And if you think using that one tool, extension in one scenario and a, a retracement in another, you could use one tool for everything. And you don't need to learn the rest of them. You guys understand that? So I'll go through and explain what I mean by that in a minute. You guys okay? Brad? Say yes. Sure. <laughs> okay, so now, in Fibonacci, you got to have a trend. That means you got to have an upward movement or downward movement. Okay? Now, most of you guys think upward, so we're going to give you some upward examples to kind of ease you into everything and then we'll give you some bearish examples. You guys okay with that? Uh -huh. So if you look at this, this is an upward movement, right? Yes? Right. 
So this is basically where people are buying, 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 buying. Yeah. Agreed? Agreed? Now at some point, people are going to stop buying and some people are going to take profit. Agreed? Yeah. So when people take profit, this is a retracement. You okay with that? Yeah. When people start buying again and they break this last point right here, when they break this point right here, this is called extension. So wherever it stopped and after it goes past that point, it's now extended past this point where people had taken profits. You guys understand that? Yeah. So retracements are basically profit taking and extension is a continuation onto the trend. You okay with that? Onto the trend. Trend. Okay. okay? Yeah. So basically wherever it stopped before, it's got to get past that in order to start the extension. You okay with that? So that terminology is simple as that. Now, you don't have to learn all the stupid tools out there. Okay? You can learn one tool, and we're going to show you how to do both the retracement and extensions. Agree? All right. Okay? So now, notice here, I click here first, right? You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Then I click here. So what's happened is this move has already happened. Agree? Right. The current bar is right here. So I already have an upward movement and I want to see where the profit taking may end and it start to go back up. You guys okay. understand that? Yeah. I do not want to go, I see that people are buying, 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 buying. I do not want to go against them. So I want to buy. Okay. But I saw this too late. Yeah. So I need to wait for some people to take some profit. After they take some profit, now I'm willing to buy. Yeah. You okay with that? And there's two or three retracements in there. There's a lot of retracements. I mean, like, I mean well, yeah. Some, if you think about it, the ones that you can see right off the bat. Well, there's right. one here where it retraced from here to here. <laughs> there's one here. Right. This retraced. This is what. There's tons. Though, this leads me into something else. Take the bigger picture first. Okay? You don't want small profits, right? You want to take the bigger ones. Come on in. You want to take the bigger ones, right? So what you want to do is you want to click here, which is the beginning of the trend. Agreed? Yeah. Then you want to click over here where the trend ended. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. And then when you bring your mouse down, it'll draw all these retracements. See, it gives you the 50% retracement, 61.8, 32.48.2. Yes? Yeah. So these values are where it can bounce off and stop going down and start going up. So the way the Fibonacci works is it could stop at this line here, that one, or that one. There's three choices. Agreed? Yeah. Notice on the first one, it didn't stop there, did it? On the next one, it came here, and then it didn't stop there. But it definitely stopped here, didn't it? Yes? Right. Now, here's some rules. If you got a, only a 38.2% retracement, that's not a major pullback. It's not a major profit taking. It's still a major trend going up. When you have a trend that's going up, it's going to pull back these 38.2% retracements. You guys understand that? Yeah. Those are major? 38 no, they're not major at all. They're part of the major trend going up. They're minor profit taking, but never major. You guys understand that? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. You could never trade, if you want to be a Fibonacci trader, you never trade the 38.2% retracement. You need a major pullback to trade Fibonacci. Okay? If you trade a 38.2, so let's say you're traded here, right? The reward risk is not going to be good. The money management is not going to be good. Because look what's happening. You're, see all these little pullbacks right here? Those are all 38.2% percent retracements depending on how you view them. So this whole major trend is created from a wave that goes up, pulls back a little, goes up, pulls back a little, goes up, pulls back a little. Okay? You can't make money on this day there. It's not good money management. You need it to pull back drastically. Okay? So if you see something at 38.2% retracement, you're never gonna trade it. The only ones you're gonna trade are 50% or 61.8. You guys okay with that? Mm -hmm. Those are what you call the major pullbacks. Is it 60, 51.8? 50% or 61.8? Yeah. 
You okay with that? Those are the only two that you could trade. If you ever go past the 61.8, right, they say that institutions took too much profit, to, they got out too many of their shares, and now this is no longer a trend. So most people say if it ever sits there and penetrates this line right here, that means the institution sold too much to a point it will never go back and resume the trend. So the trend is over. You guys okay with that? This is your last line of defense right here. If institutions sell past this point, they're saying that they don't have enough shares where they don't have faith in this particular instrument to keep on going up. Make sense? So your stop has to always be below this line right here. Agree? Okay. Right? I know you guys are late, so I probably didn't get it. I'm yet. sorry. You guys okay? Mm -hmm. Sure. Your stop kit always has to be below there. So if you bet on it bouncing off the 50%, your stop still has to be below the 61.8. Agree? If you bet over here, your stop is below there. So which one has low risk? 61.8. That has a low risk compared to you betting on it bouncing off the 50%. Well, as it goes back up. Sorry? <laughs> well, as it goes back up. Well, this is, where, this is trading. It's a probability game, yeah. right? right? You're playing the probabilities. There's, most, there's a lot of traders that just live off that 50% line. That's it. That's all they do for a living. I'm not going to tell you if they're successful and consistent, but majority of them stay at that 50% line. They think that's it. They think that's the holy grail. Okay? But the pro here's a problem. This trend's going up, right? It's nice and smooth. If there are big price movements, the gap between here and here can be huge. So right now it looks this small, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that small. It could be this big. So you could take on a big, big risk if you play off a of 50% and have to go below the 61.8% retracement. Yeah. Yeah. You see that? Mm -hmm. You see it? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. So now, once you trade this, right? Now what you do is you could sit there and bet on it coming all the way back up here to retest this high. Agree? Yes? No? Now, let's go through and let's just walk through a chart. <clears throat> let's go look at some charts. Let's go look at Euro USD. Now you always look on the, want to look on the higher time frame, not lower. It does work on the lower, but if you're learning this, you want to stick to the higher time frames. Agreed? Yes? No? Yes. yes. Is this so daily? this is daily. Okay. So this is a major trend going down, right? Right. Yes. You guys see that? Yeah. So now let me go to my drawing tools, choose Fibonacci retracements. So I'm going to click on the beginning of the trend to the end. I'm going to click on the very bottom of the bar, and when I click on there, it will overlay all the values for you. You notice I have the yellows are the key ones, right? Okay. Notice what it did. It went all the way to 50%, and what it did? It held. It bounced. You guys see that? Yes? So now, once you're in this trade, right, where can it go to? We said one possible value is here, right? What if it falls short again there? What if it goes past that? Where can you take profits? What are the levels? So the retracement tells you when to get in. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. The extensions tell you where to get out or take some profits. Okay? So now, I want to play with this. Let's say I click from here to here, right? What if I click from here to here? Well, this gives me extensions, don't they? Yes? You see that? 
it could go to here, which is the 88.6. It could go to 100%, or it could go to 128. So the three levels it could get to, once I'm in, are here, here, and here. So all I did was I clicked the other way mm -hmm. for the extension. Because I want to see, once I get in here, right, how far, this is 88.6, it came back, 88.6 of this major trend up here. When it comes here, it comes 100% back. When it comes here, it goes 28% over the, this major trend there. You guys understand that? Yes? Yeah. So let me do that again. So I just clicked over here, drawing, went to Fibonacci retracement, okay? Now I got to recognize a major trend. So this is a major trend. All this hasn't happened yet. Agreed? Right. So I'm going to click on the beginning of the trend, then click on the bottom. This gives me exactly where I can enter. I can enter on a 50% retracement or the 61.8 on going embedding and going down. This is where the profit level will stop all the profit taking. You guys clear? Yes? You had a question. Um, You're lost. <laughs> not lost. Then? Uh, just, um, at the 51% level where you... S it stopped here at the 50% level. 50%. Yep. You remember, your stop, first your stop has to be above the 61.8, so it's your stop is up there. That's where you sell. This is where you sell. Either you sell here at the 50% or 61.8. And you're betting on it going down. Your buy stop, just in case if you're wrong, it has to be above this line right here. So your stop is over here, just in case if you're wrong. Sorry? You confused me on the last graph. The extensions? Yeah. Oh, don't worry, we're getting there. So, do you guys understand? This is where to enter. Use retracements to know when to enter. But you have to have a major trend. If you have, if you don't have a major trend, can you do this? No. No. So, which time frame do you use? You can use this on any. And the major trend goes basically all the way from 100 to zero ones? Well, that's what you're, this is say, you're saying this is a trend, so it's always going to go 100 to zero to 100. Okay. But you just got to have an upward movement or downward movement that looks smooth. Mm -hmm. This could be a trend too right there, from here to here. Right. That could be a trend too. These are trends. We're looking at the big overall one. If you can't see it, go to a higher time frame until you can see it. Okay? So, Let's say you did go short right there at that 50. Mm -hmm. Where would you uh, put your stock? Okay, so first, do you understand an entry? Entry is at 50% to short it or 61.8? These two yellow lines. Agreed? So we're basically saying the institution started selling, 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 selling here. When we got to this point here, they started taking profits, 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 profits here. At this point, they could be done selling. Sorry, done buying to take to get profits, and new people could start selling at this point. There's more sellers than buyers now, so this starts going down. You guys understand that? Mm -hmm. So here, this is where the profit taking could stop here or here. Agreed? Mm -hmm. If the profit taking stops here or here, then we got a chance of it going potentially coming down all the way back to 100%. We don't know that yet. Okay. So if we enter here and here, now we need to determine what? Where to get out. Mm -hmm. To get out, we draw extensions. So remember how we drew the retracement where we're clicking here to here? Yep. You just click in reverse. You click here at the bottom first, and then click to the beginning of the trend, and it automatically draws your extensions now. And the key ones to know are 88.6, which is right here. 100% and then the 128. Agreed? So those are your three possible profit levels to get out of. Okay? Yes? Okay. <clears throat> Notice here, it blew past this 88.6, but then look what it did. It pulled back, stopped right there, held it, and then went and blew past it. 
So now you know how to get in and you know where to get out, right? right. So you got two levels to get in and three possible levels to what? Get out. I meant where would you get stopped out? Like if we went short of there at that 50, then where would you stop? It's a good question. Where's your stop? Let, let's let's make sure we got the entry and exits correct. You guys understand the entries? When you enter, you do retracements after a big trend, whether it be bullish or bearish, and it's always at the 50% retracement or the 61.8. Agreed? After you enter, then you draw extensions. Your three extension values are, are 88.6, 100%, and 128. Majority of people will not agree with me on the 88.6. I don't care. I'm telling you, it does. It is valid. You're saying get out of 88.6. No, I'm saying most people will never show you the 88.6, but it is a very, very key number. Reason why is if the trend stops here and then reverses, you got a higher low, which signifies that this trend is completely over. J. W. Gann, sorry. W.D. Gann, which is the most successful trader of all time, says a trend is over when you have a lower high from the previous one, or vice versa. So if it had stopped here and started reversing, this right here, it would sit there and form a higher low than the previous one to signify the trend is over. You guys understand that? Mm -hmm. Right? So most people don't look at this 88.6. Most people are here gunning for the 100%. I'm warning you, and I'm warning you very hard right now. 88.6 is a key, key level. Do not overlook that. Because if you're gunning for that 100%, it gets to here and it bounces and reverses. Kiss yeah. your profits goodbye. I'll talk about the stop. Well, I'm saying most of the time, though, if everybody's gunning for something, then you should get it. No. If everybody's selling. Well, everyone thought Facebook was going to 50 to 100. <laughs> what happened? That's Nasdaq's fault. Well, you could blame whoever else you want on this, okay? You want to play, here, blame Spain, blame, blame Italy, blame uh, Norway. This is Euro USD. Who do you want to blame? Nasdaq. Russians. <laughs> Russians, all, uh, the Russian the crowd sat there and got really volatile during a soccer game. Well, you want to blame them because the Euro went down? No. Who do you want to blame? Nasdaq. So what? If the crowd's doing it, what do you think? Let me tell you something. I'm not, I'm not I'll tell you something. I'm just saying. Let me tell yeah, you something. That's what happened. Let me tell you something. If I go to New York and a taxi cab driver gives me a recommendation, you know what I do? He tells me to buy a particular instrument. You know what I do? I short the crap out of it. I put everything behind going the other way. Yeah, the taxi cab driver. Well, that's the whole crowd, isn't it? Right. I mean, if once yeah, but that's the, the whole crowd, isn't it? Is that the whole crowd? Yeah. So I just you just sat there and acknowledged that you're wrong. I don't know. I mean, it's different when you have people that are gunning for something. What's different? Let me tell you something. When institutions buy or sell, they're not going to do it with you knowing. Majority of trends will happen without you knowing. You will only find out once 50 to 80, 50 to 60 percent of that trend is done. You will only know about this here. Because what are you doing? You're listening to the news. Right? You're not going to know what an institution is doing. Did you know what they were doing for Facebook? No. Did you know what they're doing for EuroUSD? No. What they say, EuroUSD can't get lower, right? Did it go lower? Yeah, EuroUSD yeah. went lower. Now everyone's short the EuroUSD, right? And what happened when they were short? It went up. <laughs> what happened to the crowd? We got crushed. If everyone's short, how many sellers can you have? Not that many. Exactly. So the sellers dry up. All it takes is a couple of buyers to sit there and move it, don't it? Yeah. If there's no more sellers. Agree? Yeah. And remember one thing. I want you to think about this, right? If it's so good and you're selling and everyone else is selling, doesn't someone have to buy when you sell? Mm -hmm. Is there someone on the other side? So if it's so good that everyone's selling, why would anyone be buying? Well, I mean, you, that's the whole theory, but nobody knows. If everybody knew that, you know, 
So what are you going to do? Listen to news? So you're going to lose tw listen to news 24 hours a day? Listen to one argument to another? 24 hours of sleep over. You're going to listen to news just to try to figure out what everyone's doing? No, I don't listen to the news. Yeah, you do. Admit it, you do I'm listen. Read the news, but yeah, you, you listen to news. Oh, you listen to news. news. I see it so many times. You call me up and ask, "What do you think this guy meant?" No, oh, I hear that. Was, not. Let's let's let's, let's not go there. This guy listens to the news. Don't 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 <laughs> listen to him. Okay. He listens to a lot of news and a lot of junk. He's got a lot of free time, doesn't he, Sherry? Yeah. He's got a lot of free time. By the way. He's down to Macon. He was the one that was supposed to. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so you guys understand this one? So pick a currency pair. Uh, can you, you this is right? Yeah. Can you go even S&P today? No, those currencies. So let's go for another currency and then we'll go to the uh, I just right. want to find one match. Okay, yeah, but we'll go, let's do one more currency and then we'll come back to that. Let's look at the dollar franc. Dollar franc. I don't have franc. You can do the stock here. Oh yeah, it's a stop. So what's a stop? So that's a good question. Well, there's a couple of ways you could do it. Every time it moves down a Fibonacci level, the past Fibonacci level plus a couple of points could be your stop. Does that make sense? So once it gets to 61.8, you can move your stop to 50% plus a couple of points. Once it gets to this 78.6, you could use it 50% 61.8 plus a couple of points and trail it that way. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Or what you can do is use pivots and every time the pivots go down, these major pivots here, these triangles, use the pivots as a trailing stop. So you could use the old Fibonacci values above you in a bearish trade or you could use pivots with a buffer, either one. How much, what's the buffer that you have? On the buffer is whatever you want it to be. Agree? Okay. So what is the stop? So you could use these Fibonacci's plus the plus. So what is a stop? I mean, what do you mean by stop? I mean, stop is where if you're wrong, you get out of the trade. Okay. So let's say you're betting on it going down. There's a level up here you're gonna put and say, okay, you know what? If price comes all the way up here and I go this much negative, I want to get out. I'd rather take my losses now and run before I lose my shirt. Okay. That's where you stop it. And what you want to do in trading is have a trailing stop. So as the price goes down, your stop keeps on going down, 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 down. Does that make sense? So eventually you get to a point where it's a free trade where your entry is below, your stop is below your entry in a bearish right. trade. And on this one right here, this is a retracement that you just drawn? This is extension because remember, okay. we shorted it here okay. and we actually traded it. Extension is when you go to zero. Low to high. Yep. Think of yep. it this way. Entries are retracements, extensions are where you're going to take profits. Okay. okay. Agreed? Now, did we cover that? We cover your stops? You good with it? Yep. Okay. So now, we don't have German, Germany. No, the Swiss franc. Swiss franc. Euro Switzy? Uh, dollar. US dollar. Dollar Switzy? Yeah. Okay. You threw me in the loop for that. <laughs> like, huh? <laughs> okay. So now this looks ugly, right? So let's start here. This is a major trend, isn't it? Right. Yep. So I'm going to click on the beginning of the trend to the end. And what did it do? It went all, it went, it uh, kind of hung around the 50% for a while, didn't it? Yeah? came off the 50, didn't quite hit it until here, and then it blew past that went down to 61.8, didn't it? After it got to 61.8, let's say we entered at 61.8. Agreed? Okay. So I'm going to draw a line here. I'm going to say this is my entry right there. Agreed? So I'm going to delete my Fibonacci. So now this is my entry going long. I'll just call it blue. Everyone okay with that? Uh -huh. Now I need to know exactly where my profit taking levels are, right? So before I had click from here to here, uh -huh. now I'm going to click reverse. So I'm going to click here. Whoops, it would help if I got my Fibonacci retracements back. 
if I click on here to here, and now I know my levels, right? So I could come in, I could say, okay, 88.6 is going to be one level. This is going to be another level. And then this is going to be another level right there. So I could basically come, I could delete everything. So now I got a clean looking chart where basically this is my first profit taking level. So I'll call this T1 and call this yellow. My second profit taking level, whoops, which I deleted. Let's just say it's here. T2. <coughs> and my third one, it's here. T3. So, boom. This is my entry. And my stop, since this is a 61.8, or just a couple of points below that, let's just say it's here. And this is my stop. Hold on. Everyone okay with that? Yeah. So it looks clean now, right? Uh -huh. So remember, you got in here, all this hadn't happened. Pretty simple? Yeah? Yeah. Yes. What do you make of uh, when price broke above 100 and then it went back down to 88 points? You just follow your rules. Uh, you just follow your rules. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just follow your rules. It's got to get to that 128. Doesn't get there, doesn't mean anything. Okay? Now, let's say you're looking at this today. So where would you move the stop off? Well, your stop is you could use the old FIP, FIP, FIP values, right? Uh -huh. Which this is the one that penetrates, hasn't got to the next one, so it's this one plus a couple of points. So your stopper is right there. Or you could use this pivot low, which is a couple of points there. So either the pivots or Fibonacci's or whatever levels you have, and you use those. Okay? Now, let's say you're looking at this live, right? This is where you're looking at it today. So let's get rid of everything. Now, here's the part that's very, very tricky with Fibonacci. Now, let's say this is a live chart, which it is. Agree? Okay. So let's draw a Fibonacci. This is a trend, right? From here to here is a trend, agree? Yeah. In theory, you could say the bottom is really here from here to here, isn't it? Sure. So which one? Okay, let's try both. I guess so, time okay, so let, let's, no, no, you got to stick with one. If you can't master one, you can never be successful in one more. If this is not clear, you could go to a higher one. Let's go to a higher one. Let's see what that looks like. How's that look? It looks from here to there, doesn't it? Right? Well, just, what you But say? then, if you start drawing from here to here, you could draw from here to here, right. that's and right. you that's could go I here said, to here. That's where I said the time frame down at the bottom. So if you go on this one, it gets even more confusing, doesn't it? So let's take the daily and let's just map out all the possibilities. Agree? So let's go Fibonacci retracement. Let's say this is the bottom. That's the top. Agree? Okay. Yes? Now, let's say I'm a 61.8% retracement guy. So that's one level. Agree? Mm -hmm. So that's one possible entry. Now I can sit there and go from here. Whoops. I'm going to go from here to here. And now my entry for the other one is right there. Agreed? Yeah, okay. Let's delete everything. So here's my two possible entries. Which one? Now, I would get a little lower. <clears throat> well, so here's here's the pros and cons. Let's say I go th and say this is my entry, right? Uh -huh. Well, what if it just comes here and bounces off there and you just missed a trade? Okay. <coughs> yes. Let's say I enter here. If I enter here, then my stop has to be below below that, which would be right there. So I add on more risk. Is the risk worth it at that point? Mm 
Now which one? Man, we did this one and this one, right? Uh -huh. Well, what about this middle one? It's, it could be counted too. So now we got another one. Pick a choice. Which one you want? One, two, or three? Let's mark them. This is where people usually hate me when I do Fibonacci presentations. Can you see why? They're like, you set us up. It looks so good and good and everything, and then all of a sudden you show us a chart, and you're like, now, instead of a simple one entry, now you gave me three. Did I give you three, or did the charts give you three? Yeah, but those three that you got there are over time, different time frames, too, right? You got one nope. overall. I mean, no, April, they're not March, different time frames. Right? They're still the same time frame. I mean, down at the bottom, that April, March, and June doesn't mean anything? Nope. Hmm. Nope. Nothing. Pick one. Which one would you use? Uh, the one with the pivot. So, this one? Uh -huh. Okay. So, under you choose that one. One, two, or three? Second one. Second one. Why? Do you just like the middle? Yeah. Random. Okay. <laughs> well, what if it hits the first one, bounces it off? You just missed it. You want that one? Interesting. Don't know, do you? Brad, which one? One, two, or three? Uh, the bottom one's number one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I pick three. Sure. <clears throat> you don't know? Okay. So let's go through pros and cons. There's no right or wrong. Okay? But you could think about this and you could see what type of trader you are. So if I enter on the first one, right? If I say entry was the first one, if it came to the second or the third one and bounced off there, I'll never enter the trade. So I missed the opportunity completely. Agreed? Right? Second one's in between. It really offers nothing, so it's useless. So you're completely wrong. Okay? Choosing the middle makes, makes is harmful in trading. Never choose the middle. One extreme or the other. Okay? In trading. I know in life it's not going. In trading, choose either the upper or the lower. Never in between. Agreed? So we eliminated one, right? So now, if we enter on the first one, entry one, if it comes to entry three and bounces off that, we don't get into a trade, do we? Do we? No? So, is that good or bad? Could be bad. Let's say we enter on three. How much risk are we really going to take on? If I say my stop is right here, okay? And I say my stop is right there. Agreed? Everyone okay with that? Yeah. Agree? Right? Now, if I say if I enter here on entry three and my stop is there, what's my profit level? It's good. The hundred percent's right there, right? Mm -hmm. The eighty-eight's probably there, right? Mm -hmm. So between here, between here and here. That's my reward, yeah. and my risk is that much. Yeah. So let's let's look at this. Let's let's map it out exactly to a T and watch this. So let's go get my retracement tool. Let's say that basically this entry three was using this one, right? So I'm going to draw this, and I'm going to sit there and say my worst case scenario is it gets to 88.6. Agree? Okay. Then it could come to here. Now, I've done this, right? Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to color code these. So this is my first target level. Second target level. Is this a lot of work? 
Everyone okay with that? Yes? Yeah. Now, if we do that, let's calculate my reward risk ratio. So let me just take a snapshot of this so I could draw. So everyone see that? Uh -huh. So my reward risk ratio, my risk is where? From here <coughs> to there. Agreed? Yes. Yes? My reward is where? My first reward is going to be from here to T1. Agreed? Yes? So, is this a good reward risk ratio? Absolutely. Yeah? So, even if it's choosing a higher entry, is it still good? Yeah. So, now the debate comes reward risk is good for either one of them, right? Yeah. For entry three, you'll get in. Entry one, there's a possibility you wouldn't get in. Which one would you choose? Entry three. You guys see that? The other thing is, which someone pointed out, entry three is also this little pivot, isn't it? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Matches up, doesn't it? Yeah. That makes an even higher probability it'll bounce off there. So what's the best answer? Three. Entry three. So now, <coughs> We've mapped out everything. This is your trade. Right? I put an order out there. Agree? Agree. So, let's say I put an order out there right now. So, watch. What's a limit order? Agree? So there's my order. Okay? Now, you have an order out there. You gonna look at this every day? You shouldn't. So what do you need to do? When would this order need to be canceled? It would cancel itself. No, the order you have not entered the trade. Oh. The only time you can enter the trade is when price comes down to here. When it breaks it, get it up there. When it breaks this pivot up here, it's done, isn't it? It's yes. Going down. It's not going to go down, and it just it created a new higher high to a point it shows the trend is going higher, isn't it? Uh -huh. This point right here is no longer the high, is it? No. So if it breaks this point right here, we need to cancel order, don't we? Yes? If price goes down, it'll enter our trade here. If price goes up, it goes all the way up there, and if you're not looking at the charts, guess what? You're doomed. You'll have this order sitting out there for two years, and you won't even realize it, will you? You need to, when will this trade be invalid? When will this order be invalid? If it breaks this pivot high right here, it'll be invalid, right? So guess what? I'm going to put alert there to a point, I'll say, okay. I got alert there now, so if price ever gets there, <coughs> I'm going to cancel the order completely. If price goes down here, I'll enter the trade. Agreed? Yes? So I got it cornered, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What do I do now? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Walk away. Definitely. Definitely. I like that. That's what, that's what I'd like to start uh, doing. So I'll keep this trade on. And let's see what happens next month. Yeah. What happens? If I lose, it comes out of your pockets. Each <laughs> one of you has to share. <laughs> Agree? Agree. You okay with that? Yeah. Now, should you get out here? Right here? Should you get out? No. I mean, what if it goes higher? Can it go higher? Sure. So here you could do what you could do is you could put alert here and say I could go to preserve mode where I protect my profits where I tighten up the stop. So you don't necessarily have to get out here. You could just protect your profits. 
You see how to make this work now? I'm learning. I'm not Most people, when they do Fibonacci, will not tell you to put an alert up here. Most few people will not look at the 88.6% retracement. Most people do not even calculate reward risk. They're just going nilly-willy, putting a buy order at 50% or 68.1, and then sitting there praying that it gets yeah. to the high and getting out there. Yeah. That's all they're doing. Do, you don't ha they don't even use trailing stops. Here, we're moving our stops up. So as it goes up, 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 we're protecting ourselves. And our risk is going down lower and lower and lower. Agree? Yeah. Can you do this? I can do it. That's it. For people that use Ichimoku, Fibonacci is already built in. We don't have to calculate it. It's already done. Those lows are Fibonacci. <laughs> Our indicators are Fibonacci values. Huh? Our indicators are Fibonacci. Those red lines, green lines, yellow lines, and white lines, Fibonacci levels? Prove to yourself they are. Okay. So you don't need to confirm anything with Fibonacci? It's, it's built in. Ichimoku levels are Fibonacci levels too. So you don't have to go through and do any of this. Hmm. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? So there's no problem with cons to the matter? No, 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 no. I'm just, to the people that use Ichimoku, I'm telling them they don't have to do the Fibonacci's because it's already built in. You don't have to draw. You don't have to draw. You don't have to draw. You don't have to validate. Yeah. What what would make me want to trust each book? You have to prove it to yourself. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing I could do. You right. have to prove it yourself. Right. All I'm saying is these Fibonacci's are in Ichimoku already. They what? They're already in Ichimoku, so we don't have to draw these levels. They're there already. Yeah. What's the equivalent of the fifty percent of the to uh, I guess the one that indicators on? Well, if you think about it, what are the indicators? The, they're the average of the high and the low, right? High, low, average is what? 50% retracement. No, I'm saying what's the equivalent indicator of each of For what? For that retracement, for that level. It could be a red line, it could be a green line, it could be a yellow line. It could be any one of those. Well, you figure it out. I'm not going to give you everything. You still have to think, don't you? You're young. Use your damn brain. <laughs> oh, you're not. Use your brain. Jeez. What's well, the answers all the time? It's like telling me, why is Facebook going down? I don't understand it. I never said that to you. <laughs> Does Ichimoku out of other systems that you experience? require more thinking? You always have to think. No, what I mean is to take more of the thought You see things system. easier. You do. Yeah. When I saw Ichimoku, I saw everything I traded in a couple of indicators and, and very easily. Because the, one, the next step after you match master Fibonacci is Elliott Wave. Right? Okay. So here's Fibonacci. Next step after that is Elliott Wave. After you master LA wave, then there's Ichimoku. It's a three level tier system. That's the progress. I, that's the path I went down. I was a Fibonacci trader. Then I moved over to Elliott wave. And then once the problem in the Elliott wave was that I, it would never show me how to trade the institutional wave. I took all these classes all over the world. They would always show me how to trade the retail wave, which is scraps mm -hmm. on the table. Uh -huh. That never showed me the institutional. So I was trying to figure out the institutional. So I was making money as an Elliott Wave trader, but always looking for how to trade the institutional way. Uh -huh. Because you never can figure it out because people, institutions do it and you don't know. Mm -hmm. and it's too late. When I saw Ichimoku, that's when it all came together. And how long have you been using Ichimoku? I can't even count. Mm -hmm. Years now. That was my progression. <coughs> Is Ichimoku, is it just not that 
Uh, most of it was not. It was not meant to come to the Western world. All the books were written in Jap Japanese. Also, Ichimoku was mainly made for currencies. It was never developed for charting applications outside ch currencies. Okay. So what happened was when I came across it a couple of years ago, there was no indicator. The currencies had it, but you couldn't see stocks, you couldn't see futures, nothing. Mm -hmm. So I developed the indicator for eSignal and TradeStation and Ninja. So we went down all these charting platforms and we literally developed the indicator for every one of them. So now we've got a global view of Ichimoku on any instrument worldwide. So once that happens, now it's starting to become more and more popular because now it's available for everyone. Uh -huh. Even Thinkorswim, we got with Tom Sosnoff with Thinkorswim and had the development done for Ichimoku. Was it wasn't there. We pushed it. From the from the inception of Thinkorswim. Yeah. And the reason why like we like Thinkorswim is because you don't pay the charting packages to all these other brokerages. If you want to trade futures with other brokerages, you have to pay 50 bucks, 100 bucks a month just for the data fee. Think or swim, you don't. So there's a cost for ninja trade? For the data fee, it typically is. With think or swim, you don't. And the reason why is more, more people trade, per user trades more in think or swim than anyone else. Where the commissions off there overset the, bro the, 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 the exchange fees. So they don't charge you exchange fees. Normally, if you trade the futures, you're supposed to be charged the exchange fees. So, lastly, let's wrap up. We'll cover a future. A mini SP 500 futures. Narendra over here is trying to predict which way is the market going to go up or down. Narendra, what do you think? You want to take a Fibonacci from here yeah, I was, I or was here? Thinking, I was thinking he was heading down. That's why I thought he was going. So. Do we have opinions? This is the in mini S and P five hundred futures. It governs the U.S. stock market. Okay, so let's go to weekly view. Let's go to weekly view. Okay. How's this look? Look good. So let's let's draw it out. So Narendra thinks it's all overall it's bearish. Why did you draw your line to there? Bottom to top. Well, I mean, you ended that diagonal line. Why not to the bar? At the top? I didn't do this diagonal line. It's part of the package. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, what did I say? A trend is still occurring when it pulls back to thirty-eight point two, right? So, did this just pull back to 38.2 and bounce off that? Yeah. So it still looks like a major trend, doesn't it? it does. It's not even gone for a major pullback, has it? No. So even though most people are frantically panicking out there, thinking the market's about to crash and all that, is this still bullish? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so it's not going down this week. Uh, not going down this week? Maybe never. How about looking at the charts instead of making an opinion? How about this? Look at that chart. What do you think? Does this look bullish or bearish? It looks bullish. How about you? Bullish up or down? Looks up? Uh, up? Probably sideways, but. Up? Well, overall, it's up, right? Yeah. Up? Yes. Higher, higher, and lower. Right. This is the monthly chart. Think the markets are crashing? Uh, not the way they're talking about it. <laughs> oh, what did he say? Not like what, 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 what? The media. What, what? What did he say? <laughs> so, say it out loud, I can't hear it. Oh, you're talking about those news <laughs> Whoa, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> what, you, no, no, no. what did he say? Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> what, what, what happened? The CNBC gurus. Oh, what the CNBC gurus telling me? Market's gonna go down. Market's gonna come down. What are talking to Okay. One month from now, let's see what the market's in. It's the same. What is it? Uh, the, there are more puts than. Who cares? Uh, let puts. me ask you something. <laughs> were, if there's more puts, they're talking about options, right? There's right. more puts and this and that. How do you know people are, those puts are for getting in or getting out? How do you know what option strategy is there for? You don't know. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. You can't count the puts and the calls and all this stuff. You can't look at the put call ratio. 
You can't look at the open interest for options at all. It's distorted now. People do iron condors as four legs to a trade. Well, it's puts, right? But guess what? If you buy or sell it, if you sell puts, right, depending on the strategy, you're actually better than going up. Depending on, if you do debit verticals and credit verticals, right, you could do opposite. You can't listen to people. Charts tell you everything. I mean, this chart tells you the long-term view is what? Bullish. The weekly tells you it still held the 38.2% retracement right here, right? And look at that. Didn't it hit this pivot too right there? Yeah. Is it, didn't we talk about how strong that is? Yeah. yeah. Has it violated that? No. What's the drawing in the sand? What's your floor? 12.79. Has it broken below that? No. Has it closed below that? No. Are we still bullish? Yes. What's the daily look like? Right here. Has the daily given you a buy signal? No. So what do you do? Your weekly is telling you bullish. The, the, week, the daily is going down. What do you do? Buy. No. You sit on the side and you wait until you get a buy confirmation on the daily. Your weekly is telling you up, but there's no signal here. You got to wait for a buy. What do you mean? For to, wait that pivot to go up. Here. You want to draw Fibonacci's here? Here. Let's draw you some Fibonacci's. You want one here? Here's one. Right around the 61.8 if you chose this pivot. That point right there, right? Hey, let's, let's, oh, shh, shh, shh. Let's choose this one. How about this one? Right around 50%, okay? So let's choose another one. Let's choose this one. Wow, look at that. 38. This level is a what? A buy level, even on the daily, isn't it? If you're a Fibonacci trader. What are you doing at that level? Buying. If you chose this pivot, you bought. If you chose this pivot as a low, you bought. You chose that a pivot, you bought. No matter which one of these you chose at the beginning of the trend, it still told you this was what? A buy. So, do you have any business going short? So, you going to listen to CNBC? Yes. <laughs> let me let me guess. You're, the, you're gonna be the first one down here when CNBC comes to Atlanta. They here. They already did. Last week. You were in New York. I know. I missed it, Tom. I would have had so much fun. <laughs> Last time they came, I, I met Jim Cramer. Who's down here? He's funny. Yeah. He's so. So is it, you do a pullback trade or? Anything? What do you think you do? No, you wait. If you're a Fibonacci trader, you're in, aren't you? So don't you say you gotta wait till this fifty percent? Yeah, it's already at that level. Didn't I just show you it was at that level? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's already there. Twelve seventy nine was it. You should be bought. You're twenty points late. What do you think I was doing? Well, you don't you don't do the, the day trading, you know, but. Like, I do long time term. Long what do you, what do you, is it still worth doing day trading on that payment? Listen to me, and let's let's make this clear, okay? Future products are not meant for day trading. What did I say, Kishan? Futures. Future products. Just repeat what I said. Don't add your own opinion. Future products are not meant for day trading. They're for hedging. Farmers use corn and all that for hedging. People that deal with gold, jewelry stores use gold and silver for hedging. They're for hedging products. Now, I don't know in my entire career, neither does my business partner know of any future day trader that is successful at all. Period. You want to trade? You go for it. When you can lose, don't come crying to me. Futures are not meant for day trading. So, so no gap up, gap down trading at all. Gap up and gap down are totally different. That's you do gap up trading for stocks and stuff like that. You don't do gap ups for futures. That's like the deadliest thing to do. That's like, remember, you got twenty eight thousand dollars. Let me have it. I'm going to India on you. You're gonna pay for me to go on a worldwide trip. You want to go too? He's paying. 
Yeah. Worldwide tour. He's paying. That's like playing gas. You might as well just give us your money right now. Gaps are the worst, deadliest thing in futures. Let's put it this way. You could be up $28,000 in a future trade. Next morning you wake up, not a single thing you could do, and now you're down $12,000. What do you do? What do you do? You cry. That's what you do. <laughs> Here, and let me, uh, let me uh, this, I'm going to just wrap up now.